Uh, okay, this is uh, Bill Payne, and we're here at the Lamry Hackett Post 72 at 30 John Street in Swogadies, New York. And uh, it's uh, about 11 o'clock here on Sunday, the uh, 6th of March, 2005. And uh, we have with us our, our, our crew, is uh, myself, Bill Payne, doing the interviewing, and we have our commander, Alan Brzezinski, and our technical assistants, uh, Mac McElreath and uh, Kate uh, Thornton. And we're interviewing. Joe Sinnott. Joe Sinnott. And I'm glad uh, you guys invited me here. It's a, it's a pleasure nice and an honor. You. Now, uh, you served in the Navy, so you weren't drafted into the Navy. I no, no, I was 17 years old when I joined the Navy. Mm -hmm. Where were you living at the time you joined Sogates. the Navy? I was born in Sogates, raised in Sogates. Mm -hmm. And actually, I didn't like the Navy. I, uh, I was an Army. I loved the Army. And even to this day, I root for the Army football team. But uh, my brother had just been killed August 28th in France. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, w I would have been 18 in October. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have had to sign up for the draft. Mm -hmm. And my mother was so afraid that I'd be drafted into the Army. Mm -hmm. She asked me if I would join the Navy so I wouldn't be drafted. So I joined the Navy when I was 17, just before I was 18. What year was that? 1944. Okay, so that was during World War II. Oh, yeah. Can you show us a picture of your brother over here, please? Yes, Jack. And, uh, <coughs> Zero one and eight. You can tell us a little about that. Go ahead. Yeah, well, Jack, uh, he fought in the third division. It was the most uh, decorated division of World War II. Suffered the most casualties. They had 36,000 Purple Hearts, can you imagine? Uh, they had 10 major campaigns. And Jack, he joined the third division just below Casino. So he fought at Casino, Anzio, uh, Cisterna, Rome, mm -hmm. southern France, and he was killed in southern France on the Rhone Valley uh, August 28th. And like I said, he was in the... Uh, First battalion, along with Odie Murphy, Jack was an A company. Odie Murphy was a B company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Odie Murphy was awarded the Medal of Honor and uh, every medal that the, the army uh, could give. Decorated American soldier in World War II. He, he certainly was. Yeah. And uh, of course, Jack, Jack and I—I I was like his tail when we were kids growing up, and uh, mm -hmm. I miss him to this day. It's, okay. it's unbelievable. Got that? Yeah. Okay. So, for that reason, you were in the Navy. And yeah, of course, I remember some great stories about that because uh, yeah. I was up in boot camp uh, in November of 44 when the Army played the Navy. Where was the boot camp? Up in, up in Sampson, it's up, by, up by Geneva, on the Finger Lakes. In New York State. New York State. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, well, it was, of course, they played on a Saturday afternoon, so we, we were off on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. And there were about 120 men in our company, and I was the only one rooting for Army. <laughs> did you imagine? <laughs> so you actually did serve during World War II then? Yes. And uh, what was your training like besides uh, what you told me here? You, uh, how, how were you trained at Camp Samson? Were they training you? Oh, we had uh, 10 weeks of training. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we did everything. We had, of course, PT, physical training. And we had firefighting. We had airplane recognition. Uh, you know, we, we shot the, uh, the different uh, guns that you would uh, encounter on a, on a ship mm -hmm. in case you were put in the armed guard. They mm -hmm. defended, the, uh, as you know, the... Uh, the Liberty ships and the mm -hmm. APs, and uh, yep. in case you weren't even in the uh, the regular Navy, for, you know, crack carriers, cruisers, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we, we ran the whole gambit of uh, every type of training you could think of. You know, what were your instructors like? Uh, we had a our chief was your, our instructor, and we had a uh, a second class seaman. He was very knowledgeable. But the chief's name was Jim Feeney, and he uh, he reminded you of Pat O'Brien if you remember Pat O'Brien from the old movies. He was a Tough Irishman, uh -huh. and uh, we, uh, our company, uh, not not because I was in it, certainly, but we uh, we were there for ten weeks, and every week we were 4.0 for inspections and everything because he ran a tight ship, mm -hmm. and we uh, we were given they had a big war bond drive up in, uh, up in Samson, and our company won the war bond drive of all the different company had you know, I countless companies, and uh, so anyway they gave us a day in Geneva. That was our uh, prize, and the day we went into Geneva, they had four feet of snow coming off the lakes. <laughs> <laughs> you got through boot camp okay? No, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, I, I, I broke boots uh, December the 21st, 1944. The Battle of Bulge was going on at that time, as mm -hmm. you know. It, mm -hmm. it started the 16th of December, mm -hmm. and I came home December 21st, and I'll never forget it was snowing, a big blizzard. Mm -hmm. I got off the train in Catskill, mm -hmm. and I uh, was living in, the, in West Camp at the time, mm -hmm. and I had a hitchhike to West Camp, and uh, I got, fortunately I got a truck, I ride with a truck driver, yeah. and uh, like I said, and then I had to walk about a mile through the snow till, till I reached my home, 
Yeah. And uh, so you don't forget things like that. No, no, no not at all. And um, what happened after you got your leave from boot camp? Then you yeah, I went back to uh, we called it OG, your outgoing unit, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you look every day to see where you're going to be assigned, mm -hmm. and uh, in those days, late '44, it was it was very unusual the way they did things. They, all the aptitude tests didn't mean a thing. Mm -hmm. They uh, they posted finally they put they posted our company on the board, and the first third went in the armed guard. The next, according to the alphabet, I'm talking about the second mm -hmm. third went in the uh, amphibs. And, you know, they brought in the troops mm -hmm. yeah. into the beaches. Yeah. And the last third, I happened to be in the last third of the alphabet, mm -hmm. went into the sea bees. Yeah. So I had just seen the movies, The Fighting Sea Bees with John Wayne. Mm -hmm. And I pictured myself, because, you know, they, they did a lot of fighting with oh. the Marine, mm -hmm. they fought with the Marines, as you know. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, so when I went over to, they shipped us to Davisville, Rhode Island. We got off the train there. And all we saw was guys walking around with helmets and machine guns and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, this wasn't the Navy I had joined, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it turned out that the CB was a great outfit, you know, mm -hmm. tremendous. So you got you got special CB training. I was I was sent to Davisville, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and uh, they put me in a trucking outfit. It was the first trucking outfit formed in the CBs, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I couldn't even drive a car. I never drove a car in my life, you know. Yeah. But you know how the Navy was. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, they they taught us how to drive a, a six by six truck and. Uh, mm -hmm. We had trained there about two months, and then they shipped us to Wyoming, California, mm -hmm. uh, near L.A., Oxnard, Ventura. Yep. And we used to drive up through the uh, San Gabriel Mountains on maneuvers and whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's where we really learned to drive, out there in the mountains. You did get training with small arms and that type of thing. Oh, yeah, like carbine. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what we carried that all the time. Yeah, the, M the M1 carbine? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so your job assignment was driving a truck, right? Yep. And uh, did you ever, uh, uh, then you got shipped overseas? Yeah. And where'd you go? Okinawa, uh, directly to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. uh, well, along the way, we stopped at uh, Pearl Harbor, and yeah. we stopped in the Carolines, mm -hmm. and we stopped in the Marshalls, and a week talk, and a week talk had just been taken a few months before. Yeah. And uh, then we uh, we stopped at uh, Okinawa. We, we were mm -hmm. we, uh, we you know we disembarked uh, at night uh, at, at Okinawa. We pitched our tents in a in a sugar beet field. I remember that the, the army and marines had just gone by, mm -hmm. and uh, it was all mud. Of course, it, it was by Machinado. It was between Machinado and Naha. Yeah. That you're familiar with the area, Bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that's where we, mm -hmm. our first camp was pitched. You know. Was the fighting still going on but, in Okinawa at the time? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, we had just passed through about a week before the army had gone, and mm -hmm. the 10th army, yeah. and uh, 96th division, the 77th, and the 7th, mm -hmm. plus uh, three uh, marine divisions yeah. were. Uh, encountering tremendous opposition mm -hmm. in the southern part of the island, yeah. Shuri Castle and uh, mm -hmm. around Naha, yeah. it, it was devastating that whole area, and mm -hmm. it took them a long time to get down to uh, Suicide Cliff and the the end of the island. You know. Yeah. 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 So the the battle was still going on while you were there. Yeah. Did you get involved in any combat yourself? No, not personally. Of course, mm -hmm. we we had. Uh, you know, Japanese planes come over, dropping bombs on the ships out out in the harbor. Oh, yeah. Of course, the, the the harbor was loaded with so many ships. There was more ships there than any uh, uh, you know any action in World War Two. Really, thousands yeah. of Navy ships. Well, they, the Navy lost close to six thousand men at Okinawa. Yeah. Uh, because of the kamikazes and whatever. Right. And uh, you know, it, it was it was devastating. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but we uh, the first job I had at night. We drew straws to see whether we would drive at night mm -hmm. or day, yeah. and uh, there were 12-hour shifts, so I drew the night shift, first mm -hmm. thing, so we got in our trucks, because we didn't know a thing about the island, yeah. and uh, we went down on, and uh, you backed up on a pontoon bridge, a pontoon, pontoon uh, um, uh, barge, yeah. and they loaded your truck, now, it could be anything, we didn't, it could be food, mm -hmm. so I happened to get a load of hand grenades, my first <laughs> First assignment, if nobody wanted the hand grenade, because that meant you had to bring them down to the Marines yeah. that were about 10 miles away, mm -hmm. and there were no roads, it was just all mud, yeah. and you had to find your way down to the Marine camp, and uh, you know, mm -hmm. it, it was it was scary for me, a 17 year old kid. Wow. Yeah. But but once you got down there, and the Marines unloaded your your truck, mm -hmm. and boy, you headed out of there as soon as you could and come back. Yeah. But you felt sorry for those poor guys. They they're the ones that had to stay there. We got back to our camp, you know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, those poor Marines, you know. You have casualties in your outfit? Yeah, we had a few, but yeah. not like you would, mm -hmm. not like a frontline uh, yeah. outfit, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, well, the Japanese used to, uh, uh, there was one spot in the southern part of the island where the Japanese had very little, very sh narrow roads, and mm -hmm. there was a stretch about two miles long. Mm -hmm. They had built these walls, 
and uh, you had to drive down through these walls, and you know, the, the roads were only maybe 15 feet wide, mm -hmm. and the Japanese used to jump off the, because a lot of them uh, that the army had bypassed, they mm -hmm. used to hole up in the caves, mm -hmm. and there were thousands of them still running around in that area yeah. that hadn't been eliminated, mm -hmm. and uh, they would jump in the back of the trucks and try to steal food or whatever was going down to the troops, mm -hmm. and uh, they used to you reach through and cut the guy's throats, and mm -hmm. the army, uh, of course, the army uh, at the time they had uh, truck drivers too that went, went down to mm -hmm. the troops, and uh, so that that was scary. A couple times, uh, you know, I, I had to, there was noise in the back of my truck. Somebody jumped in, or what, it sounded like somebody jumped in. Yeah, yeah. One one time, the tailgate had fallen down. I, but uh, you know, even though you're 18 years old, 17, 18, mm -hmm. uh, you're scared to death. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But, you know. Did you uh, you were awarded uh, uh, medals and citations? Yeah, uh, well, hey, I had the, uh, the Asiatic Pacific, yeah. you know, the mm -hmm. one battle star for Okinawa. Right. The uh, American Theater, mm -hmm. of course, the, Mer the uh, uh, World War II Victory Ribbon, right. and the uh, uh, Occupation. Occupation Medal. And they, they had a medal they, they awarded us, uh, uh, they grandfathered it. It was uh, Navy, Overse Navy Overseas and Navy Combat. Mm -hmm. That's t that came mm -hmm. after World War Two. Yeah. Those, uh, mm -hmm. those oh, the combat action ribbon. Really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They didn't have that World War Two. Yeah, it was developed during the Vietnam War. Yeah, exactly. They made it retroactive to those exactly. who served in World yeah, War Two. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And um, um, how did you stay in touch with your family during this time? Well, you know, you wrote uh, letters any chance you got, uh -huh. and a lot of times they were made into email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was uh, photographing it and kind of blowing it down. That way, the they would compact yeah. more mail, mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't as bulky as regular letters. And yeah. so that's how uh, we stayed in contact. But mm -hmm. my father, my father wrote me a letter every day I was in service. Yeah. And, uh, and well, my mother wrote as mm -hmm. often as she could. But my father was a terrific letter writer, and yeah. I wish I had kept all his letters. Uh, they were destroyed after the war, mm -hmm. and uh, I often regretted it. But mm -hmm. uh, but Dad was a great letter writer. Yeah. Yeah. Did you um, have plenty of food and supplies and that oh, type yeah, of thing? The, the, mm -hmm. the Navy, in fact, our chow hall after the war was over, yeah. we, of course, first thing, one of the first things we did, we built a chow hall. Sure. Uh, CB's, big yep. Quonset chow hall. Yeah. And on a Sunday especially, we had Marines in line, Army guys, yeah. and some Navy guys off the ships. Yeah. Uh, our chow line must have had 5,000 guys in it, I'm telling yeah. you. The food was so good. Yeah. Well, you did mention that you certainly felt plenty of stress and fear in the combat zone oh, yeah. where you were. Is there anything in particular you did for good luck or that type of thing? No, I, I can't think of anything. Yeah. Nope. Just prayed, I guess. Prayed, yeah. Really? Yeah, I think that really? That. But, you know, like I said, uh, when you think how lucky the service guys were that serviced the troops. I mean, mm -hmm. I read once that uh, out of every hundred servicemen in World War II, yep. only six did the actual fighting. Yeah. The rest were mm -hmm. truck drivers, clubs, yeah, support. Uh, everything else, support troops. Sure. It's amazing. It is. Yep. And it was all the luck of the draw. You. Mm -hmm. You went where they assigned you, and uh, it was like my, my poor brother Jack. Yeah. When he went into service, he had he had just gotten over rheumatic fever, and it settled in his knees. He couldn't walk, mm -hmm. and he got his draft notice. He yeah. was drafted, yeah. and he uh, the doctor said, "Jack, you they'll never take you." So he wrote Jack a note. Mm -hmm. to the, the doctors at the draft board, and Jack went outside and tore it up. He didn't want it. In those days, you didn't want to yeah. be, uh, uh, you know. Anyone think you were a malingerer or anything like that, you know? Yep. So, and then, of course, he went to Camp Croft, South Carolina, which mm -hmm. was an infantry yeah. uh, base, and uh, mm -hmm. twice he was hospitalized with his knees there. Yeah. And just before he was sent overseas, he was hospitalized. He missed his original company. They were sent to England, mm -hmm. so he was sent to Italy in a replacement yeah. uh, outfit because mm -hmm. he missed his company, and uh, mm -hmm. it's all fate. That's what happened. So, yeah. Yeah. you um have anything, uh, any chance to get entertainment over there or entertain yourselves in any way? No, or? after the war they had uh, Japanese, they had Japanese or Okinawan entertainers that entertained us, but the, I mean, they were really pathetic. I mean, when you think back, I mean, they, they'd have these little quicker things they'd yeah, yeah. around. Uh, but no, no Bob Hope's, none of this stuff. Didn't get that, no. no. Of course, I had that in California. I, Mm -hmm. I used to we used to go to the Hollywood Canteen. Oh, before you went over, or after you came back? Oh, oh before I went over. Yeah. See, sorry. I was stationed right near L.A. Yeah. And we used to go in L.A. on weekends. Uh -huh. And uh, I met Bing Crosby on the street. In wow. fact, I got his autograph. I should have brought it in. Uh -huh. It looks like he just wrote it. And yeah. he was yeah. coming out of it. Uh, I saw him pull up in his Cadillac next, right. next to me on the curb. Uh -huh. And I said to my two buddies, "There's Bing Crosby." We yeah. were going to 
hire, rent bikes to go out and watch him and Bob Hope play at a benefit golf tournament mm -hmm. 12 miles away. Yeah. And there he drives up in his Cadillac. And two Marines got out of the front yeah. and they thanked him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he walked he walked right past us into a tobacco store. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were kind of nervous. We didn't know how to yeah. act. So he uh, he come out and he's stuffing his pipe with tobacco. Yeah. So he starts walking by us. And so I, I hollered. I said, Yo, Bing. <laughs> and uh, he stopped. And we walked up to him and I said, could we have your order? Mm -hmm. He said, sure. He said, but to keep walking, he said, you know. Mm -hmm. So we walked him to the corner. Yeah. And I, 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 we did talk to him a little bit, but the only thing I remember asking him, I mm -hmm. said, Bing, what movie are you making now? Mm -hmm. And he says, a little thing called The Bells of St. Mary's. Oh, wow. And yeah. I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And so he walked over to the little lady who was selling carnations on the street mm -hmm. corner. Yeah. And I heard her say, hi, Bing, how are you doing today, yeah. you know? Yeah. So he dropped the bill in her mm -hmm. little basket and took a carnation and stuck it in his thing. Yeah. And he turned around and he waved to us and he got his Cadillac and took off. Now you're giving these Marines a ride, I guess, in his Cadillac. No, he, 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 he yeah. dropped them off when he came in. Right. You know. Oh, yeah, he had, yeah. He had driven yeah. to him. He must have yeah. picked them up someplace else. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, remember any particular uh, humorous things that the troops did to keep themselves occupied and pranks and stuff like that? No, I'm sure there were a lot of them. I, yeah. just, well, you know, I, yeah. I just can't think of anything. Extraordinary. Mm -hmm. you know? Now you, you brought us some pictures here, I see, and uh, maybe you could yeah. mention Bing Crosby. Well, uh, I'll show you this one first. This is a this is Bing. Bing went over to entertain the troops in August 1944, mm -hmm. and uh, actually he didn't entertain my brother's troops, but yeah. I put my brother mm -hmm. in with the the troops right here. It's just my brother Jack. Mm -hmm. and, if you had a career course, as an illustrator, you still have a career as an illustrator since. Uh, yeah, I've done illustrator. many. Well, Bing has been my hobby all my life. Yeah, yeah. And I have many of his. Thousands of his radio shows and all, yeah. all his records. Yeah. And uh, of course, he. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I've done many, many. These are only two. Mm -hmm. I've done many record covers uh, yeah. pertaining to Bing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and a lot of them are, are. These are all army songs that he sang about the army. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. get on the road to victory. What do you do in the infantry? The victory polka. You know, mm -hmm. shoo shoo baby, I'll be seeing you. All these. Yeah. And uh, of course. Uh, Bing, in World War II, he was, they called him Uncle Sam without whiskers. He was, yeah. you know. Yeah. There's a picture of yourself when you were. Oh, uh, how about this? That's a young yeah. Here. yeah, that's when I was, uh, yeah. I just put the CBs. In fact, the CB patch yeah. that would, had just been uh, authorized, right. and uh, they only had it for two years. Once the war was over, they, they eliminated it, mm -hmm. but yet it's been still associated with the CBs. Oh, yeah. You know, they even like to see on my hat here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is me in 19, uh, January 1945. January 1945. Yeah. yeah. That's before I went to California. Uh -huh. and, uh, okay. and then then I went to Okinawa, of course, you know. Yeah. No aches and pains in those days, Bill. No, no, not at all. This here is, uh, <laughs> this here is your uh, pennant that you got from Okinawa. Yeah. Yep. I was in the 137th and the 139th CBs. We were the only two trucking outfits in the CBs. Mm -hmm. And this is the... Uh, logo and uh, for mm -hmm. the 139th CBs, but uh, I thought it was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And I came across it a few years ago. I, had, I had bought it from somebody in Okinawa mm -hmm. uh, right after the war was over. Uh -huh. And you can see it's a little moth-eaten. Yeah. So I said, Gee, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't realize I had it. And yep. I said, uh, there are probably, mm -hmm. probably too many of them that still no, exist, you know? Think. That's Naval Construction Battalion. That's what it means. Yeah. yeah. And the CBs were busy bees working out in, in the Well, city. the CBs is... Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Construction battalion. Yeah, and then you have a B as your uh, symbol. There. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the CB uh, designed that. Uh, mm -hmm. The guy that was in the CBs I designed this uh, little mm -hmm. B here. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, he just died about a year ago. Uh huh. Yeah. He's, he was from Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had a big CB base over Davisville. Yep. That's where I first went. Davisville, uh, right near Quonset Point. Mm -hmm. And then Wainimi, California. That was another big CB base. And they had one down in Gulfport, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. so they had a few yeah. around the country that were quite yeah. large. You know. So you were in, uh, you uh, got along well with your fellow troops and so forth, and oh yeah, hell, like good buddies. Uh, did, never to keep a personal diary. No, I wish I had. Looking yeah. back, yeah. although I can still remember a lot of the things, but mm -hmm. a lot of the things that I, I don't recall, and I wish I had. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of interesting stories. You know, mm -hmm. were you in Okinawa when the war came to an end? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, after the war, the war, as you know, well. In fact, I was on the. I, had, I was driving the truck at night, when, uh, in fact, fortunately, this time I was headed up north with a load of Quonset girders. They started building Quonset huts mm -hmm. up in the north, yeah. and the north, of course, was cleaned out first when the Marines, the Marines had cleaned out the north. Mm -hmm. The army had gone south, and yeah. they encountered a lot of, yeah. a lot of problems. So anyway, 
Uh, I was driving up north with a load of Quonset girders, August 14th. It was a night, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. when every ship, you wouldn't believe this, in the harbor, they shot off all their guns. And, and the Japanese, Tokyo Rose had been saying for weeks that the Japanese were going to land paratroopers, an all out invasion, a re invasion of uh, Okinawa, and wipe out all the existing troops on Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So uh, well, when I saw all these lights go on with the guns shooting, mm -hmm. I thought it was the Japanese landing uh, paratroopers, you know. Mm -hmm. And Tokyo Rose had said this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But actually, so I, I, I came finally to a, an army camp, and the, the guys were shooting their rifles off and everything. Yeah. So I pulled over and I said, you know, what's going on? They said, the war's over. You know, we, the Japanese surrendered. Yeah. So that was August 15th now. It was the morning of August 15th. And that's when, of course, the official signing was September the 2nd mm -hmm. on the Missouri. Yeah. But the, the actual fighting was over August the 15th. Right. Of course, they had dropped the bomb mm -hmm. uh, August 6th mm -hmm. and August 9th, the mm -hmm. two bombs on Nagasaki and you, Hiroshima. You, you would know that these atomic bombs had been dropped, right? No. You didn't even you know. didn't know anything about them. Wow. We were 350 miles from uh, yeah. Nagasaki. Yeah. And uh, no, we had no way of knowing that there was a bomb dropped. Most people in the Pacific didn't know it at the time. No. They never heard of it. Uh, we knew there were B-29s on Tinian yeah. that were bombing Japan. You know, sure. mm -hmm. it was devastating Tokyo and yeah. you know with their, with their bombs. But no, we had nothing, no inkling yeah. of the uh, atomic bomb. So how'd you feel when the war came to an end? Oh, well, you know, of course we thought we'd be home in a month. You know, yeah. uh -huh. I was there for nine months more because I, what they did then was they. Uh, they assigned us to to drive for military for military government for all the natives. There were thousands of natives, right. and uh, they needed food and clothing and everything. So we had yeah. to drive. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, as you would expect, Okinawa was supposed to have been the the base, the jumping off spot for the invasion of Japan, which was to come in November. Mm -hmm. So the island was there were thousands of tanks, airplanes, everything you could think of. The mm -hmm. whole island. It's a wonder it didn't sink. Mm -hmm. Everything on it. Mm -hmm. And of course, being a truck driver, we we hauled a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. For the troops, food, and all the, for the invasion, mm -hmm. and uh, so the island was just loaded with supplies. Yeah. And it, it, when you look back, I, I saw them run jeeps off into the ocean yeah, right and now. and burn uh, airplanes that they weren't going to use. They just had too many of them. They couldn't send them back to the states. PBYs, those big navy planes, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. just yeah. just burn them. Can you imagine? Amazing. Expensive proposition. Huh? Mm. So. Um, do you eventually, did you ever get to the home islands of Japan or? No. Never did? Right? Never did, no. Yeah. I often would have liked to. Yeah. Well, they, they started sending uh, uh, guys according to, there was a point system in yeah. those days, you know, of course, mm -hmm. being I was just 18, yeah. I wasn't married, I had very few points, you know, yeah. but guys that were married, had maybe two kids or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, were sent to um, Hong Kong. They were given a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like a three or four day stay and a leave in Hong Kong. Yeah. And which wasn't far from Okinawa, it's just across the China Sea there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they did this for about two or three months, but so many guys were getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. They got, they just got to me when I was going, supposed to go and they, they stopped it, you know. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have gotten to Hong Kong, yeah. but no, I never got to Japan. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, Okinawa was completely devastated. There was no uh, no civilian life there at all, no, mm -hmm. no stores, nothing like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd, be, I'd probably be amazed if I saw Okinawa today. Yeah. Colleges, and highways, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. You did, so then you were, um, were were sent back to the states to be discharged. Is that right? Yeah, I came. Yeah. I was discharged. I came back uh, to Treasure Island no. you know, by San Francisco. Yeah. They gave us a four-day leave. They owed us four days from a leave, another leave that mm -hmm. in the states they hadn't given us, and yeah. uh, so they gave us a four-day leave in San Francisco, and uh, that was a great. I'll tell you, the greatest thrill being in the Navy, though. Mm -hmm. was coming underneath the Golden Gate Bridge yeah. you know, on the way home. Because yeah. yeah. the war had been over. Mm -hmm. This was in May now, 1946. Yeah. But uh, coming underneath the bridge, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, we used, we used to sing in the sea region, you know, the Golden Gate in 48. We thought the war was going to last to 48. Right. Yeah. But anyway, mm -hmm. coming underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, all the guys were cheering, mm -hmm. screaming, and hollering. Mm -hmm. So then we stopped at the Treasure Island, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave us four days in San Francisco, which was, hey, great to Mm -hmm. Alcatraz and yeah. Fisherman's Wharf and mm -hmm. the great city of San Francisco. Yep. Yeah. If yeah. you saw the movie Bullet, that's what those streets look like. Oh yeah. You wonder how the people park their cars on them, you know? Yeah. Really. Yeah. 
So you made your way back to, um, to the discharge of the air No, then they, they put us on a troop train, mm -hmm. and we came across the country. We, we went across the country originally yeah. by troop train. Yeah. Brought up through Canada, down through Battle Creek, Michigan, on out through Iowa, mm -hmm. and uh, we saw quite a bit of the country. Yeah. But coming back, we came the southern route through mm -hmm. Albuquerque and on up Texas, uh, Kansas, yeah. and uh, it was great for a young kid to be seeing yeah. seeing the country by troop train. Yeah. And uh, we came over to Little Beach, Long Island, mm -hmm. and that's where the Navy discharged all their, not all, but mm -hmm. most of their yeah. uh, servicemen after World War II. Mm -hmm. So I was discharged there May 24th, 1946. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, when you came back here to the Saugerties area, right? Oh, yeah. I was born in Saugerties. Yeah, we talked before, then you got yourself a... A job. As I worked, well, my father was a pack house foreman up there for 43 years. Mm -hmm. So, now naturally. Was at the cement factory? Yeah, mm -hmm. up the Alpha. Yeah. And naturally, uh, you know, I, I, I went up there to get a job to, for something to do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I got a job there and uh, I, found, I found myself playing ball and enjoying myself. So I knew I wanted to go to art school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I found myself working up there for three years. Yeah. So finally, I, I was on that job crushing those chunks of coal. Why don't you tell us a little bit about well, that? Well, it, uh, it, it, was, it was only me. It was the winter of 1948. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. It was the coldest winter on record in New York State. Yeah. And every night, I had the midnight shift from 12 o'clock to 8 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, the coal was dumped. It had big piles of, humongous piles of coal. Mm -hmm. And it came in from Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, it's soft coal. They wet it down so it doesn't blow away. Yeah. They didn't cover the cars in those days. So when I got to uh, Sonatin, the coal was to it fire was frozen. Up, the coal was to fire up the kilns. That's and right. Baked, uh, limestone they had a coal stuff. house, what they called yeah, it. Right. And it came in frozen. We had a jackhammer out of these cars to, yeah. to get it down below. And I had to straddle a, a screw conveyor with a sledgehammer and chop up these chunks to get them small enough so they will go to the scoop conveyor so they can go up into the, uh, mm -hmm. the coal mill. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the processes for making the, the cement. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, they couldn't keep a coal passer. That, that was, as soon as a guy got on a job, he quit because it was just a bad job. <laughs> coal, so anyway, Dad kept saying, Joe, don't quit because they can't get anybody to do the job, you know? So I only stayed on it because of my father, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, we, uh, I was out there for well, at least six months in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And every time, H.B. Moore was a trucking outfit from Wyndham. Yes. They would come down in the morning, they were hauling uh, raw clay dust from one of the other yeah. sections of the mill. And we'd ask them, what was the temperature like in Wyndham mm -hmm. last night? 32 below. Ah. So, 40, so, uh, in that, when I was passing coal, every night it was like 28 below zero to 30 below zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were nights when I, my lunch pail, like in the drawing, it would sit next to me. Yeah. And I didn't have time to even, because the guy in the mill, he'd mm -hmm. solid, come on, Joe, I need more coal. Yeah. I didn't have time to eat my lunch even. You know? yeah. But anyway, yeah. that was a long story. Mm -hmm. And the more I worked, then I was sent up the quarry, fortunately, but it was cold up there too. Sure. And I did all kinds of jobs up the quarry. But mm -hmm. it, it, it was so, getting so cold, and I kept thinking to myself in a nice warm art studio, drawing the model or whatever, and I said, I got to go to art school, you know. Mm -hmm. So I saw an ad in the New York Times one, one Sunday uh -huh. about the Cartoonist and Illustrator School. It's now called the School of Visual Arts. Yeah. It's the biggest art school in the world. They got mm -hmm. schools in Japan, Germany, all over the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, and the, one of the, uh, the directors there was uh, the fellow that drew Tarzan for the Sunday newspaper, mm -hmm. Bert Hogarth. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I, I had. I've been drawing all my life. I had a lot of samples, yeah. mainly cartoon, comic strip mm -hmm. type characters. Yeah. So I, I got them all together and I brought them down to the school. And uh, mm -hmm. Bern Hogarth, I remember he looked at him and he said, Gee, he's great stuff. You never want. And I thought he was kidding. I thought they didn't have enough students. They were trying to get me to sign up, you know, because I, I was very skeptical about everything in those days. So anyway, yeah. I did sign up for the school and. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, one of my instructors liked my work, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was drawing the Lone Ranger at the time. See, a lot, a lot of the instructors were working professionals, mm -hmm. and he uh, he asked me if I would join him as an assistant. So yeah. I was on the GI Bill at the time, just living on a shoestring, barely mm -hmm. getting by. Yeah. I was living on a dollar a day. Wow. Would you believe it? My room was seven dollars a week, mm -hmm. Seven Fourth Street and Broadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to, t for breakfast, I spent ten cents. Coffee and a donut was ten cents in New York in the, in 1949, yeah. and uh, my lunch was 15 cents at school. I bought a package of 
cheese crackers and a Pepsi, 15 cents. Yeah. And then supper time, my buddy and I used to go down to Times Square, and we'd get a big platter of spaghetti oh, yeah. at Romeo's, Romeo's, 35 cents. Mm -hmm. So I, and of course, the subway was 10 cents mm -hmm. either way. Yeah. So I, I lived on less than a dollar a day when I was going to school in New York. It's hard to believe. In Manhattan. Yes. Yeah, wouldn't be able to live on a and I bought a newspaper now. at night, two yeah. cents, for the yeah. Journal American. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot different now. Huh? Yep. So you got on to a career in illustrating and uh, yeah, my you know. like I said, my instructor, uh, my, one of my instructors liked my work, and I started working for him, mm -hmm. doing uh, you know, Lone Ranger, yep. uh, uh, different Western books, mm -hmm. and he had an account over at Timely Comics, mm -hmm. which is now Marvel Comics, Marvel Comics right. and uh, they changed their name to Marvel in 1960. But so anyway, I worked with him for about what did you say six months, but while I was going to school. Mm -hmm. So then I said to Betty, you know, I'm doing all of Tom's work. I said. Mm -hmm. You know, Stan legal by my work because uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's all my work. Yeah. Tom was just signing his name to it. So anyway, I went over to uh, <coughs> Stan Lee and he gave me work right away. That was 1950, right. and I'm still with Stan. I do the Sunday Spider-Man page for the newspapers. Right. So you draw Spider-Man for the newspapers on Sunday. Yeah, I retired yeah. from Marvel yeah. from the comic books in uh -huh. 1992, uh -huh. but they wanted me to stay on and do the. Uh, the strip for the newspapers with Stan. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that for 92. You know. So you're not even entirely retired yet? No, really, no. Yeah. I would just say military experience affected your life overall and your... your well, life. I'm sure Dick, I know that he uh, you know, alluded to it, but the, it, it makes you grow up quick. I'm mm -hmm. sure you're aware of that, Bill. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. I mean, you know, when I was 17 years old going in, I knew nothing. Nobody did. None of the 17-year-old year old kids. Mm -hmm. And most of us, as you know, had never been past Kingston, you know. And we, we had we had a lot of Southerners in our company, I remember, up in Samson. Mm -hmm. And actually, would you believe it, a lot of them had never worn shoes, never had water out of a faucet, never had running water. And boy, I'll tell you, they enjoyed the, the you know, clothes they had and everything. Yeah. They appreciated it, I should yeah. say, you yeah. know. Yeah. And of uh, course, we, we had more than they did. Mm -hmm. But even so, we were... So naive about everything, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that was the big thing. You you grew up fast, you yep. know, really, you know. Yeah, you have joined veterans organizations, of course. Yeah, the American Legion, the VFW, and of course the CB uh, Island in Kingston, mm -hmm. Island X9. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you stay active with them? Oh yeah, every Thursday. In fact, we got a meeting this coming Thursday. Did you make any friendships in the uh, service no, I, that I you had a lot of great friends. People you still stay in touch with? Yeah. Really? Three three of my closest buddies die have mm -hmm. died though. Yeah. And uh, it's sad. You know, I have a couple others that I, I keep in contact with, mm -hmm. but the, 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 those three were my closest friends, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they passed away. And uh, I have another good friend uh, in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. that uh, I write to every year, but I, I don't I haven't seen him in many years. Yeah. But I had a lot of good friends. You know. Did you have reunions that you attended, or that? Type well, of they've thing? had them, but mm -hmm. uh, like I heard Dick say, but they're in Texas or Colorado, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I don't get around to those reunions. You know. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add that we haven't covered already, do you think? No, just the fact that I'm glad you asked me in, Bill. I, you know, I could talk for another two hours on, on stuff, you know. Well, how's our time? <laughs> <laughs> really? I, uh, gee, I, uh, you must have some great interviews when I say interviews, some great stories that people tell, you this know. Is, this is one of the greatest, right? Oh, there. really? Oh, yes, it is. Well, I get on a roll. Betty will say to me now, when I get out in the car, she's going to say, you know, you talk too much, you know. <laughs>